Welcome to God's Story, Your Story. You've officially made it to week nine. To recap the first eight weeks, you have to know that first week, God is great and glorious, that all the Father, Son, and Spirit were involved in creation, and that God longs to have a relationship with us, and He's revealed us so that we might come to know Him through creation, through Jesus, and also through the Bible. When God created, He said, This is very good. I like what I made. And the climax of his creation was making humanity, making male and female in his image. This means he created us to relate like him, to reflect his character back to him. You know, sadly, we come to Genesis 3. We read about this great fall, this rebellion where we decided we could live life on our own. And when God gave us his word, Adam and Eve essentially disobeyed. And God's word was distorted. And there was confusion brought into the world and essentially God's word was defiled. It's in the same chapter that God promises us the Messiah, the Savior. It's called the greater promise. And while Adam and Eve opened up this door uh, to sin in Genesis 3, so God revealed his plan of redemption, that Jesus might come and crush the head of the serpent. You come to week 5 and you read that Jesus was born, and he was born to save sinners. His name gives it all away. He came to save He's also called Emmanuel, which means God will be with us through all the ups and downs of life. He is constant. He is present. This is a hinge point for creation because no longer do we have to live under the Old Testament law. But now we get to experience grace and experience life and life to the full. So that's what Jesus talks about here in week six. Jesus' kingdom of heaven come to earth. Jesus' kingdom shows us the immediate effect that while we talk about eternity, the gift of life can be enjoyed right now. Week 7, we made sure we came to understand and believe that Jesus' death was to save sinners. Jesus fulfilled the Father's plan from eternity. He willingly and freely went to the cross. And in doing so, He pays a price for our sin that you and I couldn't pay. He brings us back into a right relationship with God and unarms sin and death and the evil one. But as we always say, death does not have the last say. Oh, death, where is your sting? In week eight, we talked about how Jesus resurrected. Now he resurrected to give eternal life. Those who profess Jesus as their Lord and Savior are justified. Remember, justified means just as if I never sinned and have a right standing with God. We can live into that right standing today. Now we talk about eternal life. We don't have to wait to enjoy the good gifts of God. God offers that right now. So while we're here, Jesus physically is not. And that's what we're going to talk about in week 9 as we discuss the ascension as to where Jesus has gone and why we experience life here and life to the fullest as he's called us to. God bless you and enjoy your study. Hello, I'm Dave Nearpass, the pastor of student ministries here at Emmanuel. It is week 9 and we're talking about the ascension. The ascension of Jesus Christ is the story of when Jesus was raised up, to, up into heaven by God the Father and taken from his disciples. It's a crucial story in the Bible that often doesn't get very much attention. We celebrate Jesus' birth, his death, his resurrection, but we rarely celebrate the ascension. It is the miraculous ascension of Jesus taken from earth to heaven to sit at the right hand of God the Father. Jesus told his disciples repeatedly he was going to the Father in heaven. And the disciples were not excited about this idea. Acts 1 tells us the story. Jesus was taken up and a cloud received him out of the disciples' sight. The disciples kept looking up wondering where Jesus was. Two angels appeared to them and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go. This cloud Jesus disappears into in the Ascension story is important because it is a reference to the cloud of God's glory that we saw as God led the Israelites out of Egypt. This cloud is the visible manifestation of God's glory, and Jesus disappears into the cloud, God's visible glory. In Jesus' ascension, he is given the seat at the right hand of God the Father. 
With Jesus' new seat, God the Father gives Jesus authority over all rulers, authorities, and powers. That is why 1 Peter 3.22 tells us, Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. God appoints Jesus to be the head of the church. Jesus continues in his role as the great high priest. Jesus intercedes for us as our high priest, and he pours out his Holy Spirit onto the church. As Jesus sits at God's right hand, he rules, he administers his kingdom, and he is judge of heaven and earth. God the Father raises Jesus from the dead, raises him to heaven to sit at his right hand, and he gives him, thor him authority to rule and be judge. Everyone will eventually stand before Jesus as he determines our final destiny. Additionally, God the Father gave Jesus the authority to pour out the Holy Spirit onto the church. The ascension of Jesus Christ is so important because it reminds us of Jesus' current role. He is sitting at God's right hand and he pours out the Holy Spirit onto the church. That's us. Jesus is the head of the church and he is actively involved in building his kingdom here on earth. Jesus is also the great judge which each person will stand before at the end of their life. But Jesus is also our advocate. Through him, we receive the forgiveness of sins because he spilt his blood for our sake. The ascension is so important because it reminds us that Jesus has authority over every power. It reminds us that Jesus is actively involved in building his kingdom here on earth. It reminds us that Jesus is the one who pours out the Holy Spirit on his church. It reminds us that the same Jesus who saves us through his own blood, he is the righteous judge we will all stand before one day. Because of the ascension, we are a people who are not shaken in the face of danger, but rather we hold secure, knowing that Jesus is at the right hand of God the Father, and he has all power and authority. God bless you today.